Welcome to Pain-Free Living. On this episode, we're going to talk about neck pain and tension headaches. Hi, my name is Dr. Andrew Gorecki, physical therapist and owner of Superior Physical Therapy. And my goal on Pain-Free Living is to show you how to let the body heal naturally and avoid medications, injections, and surgery. So again, on today's episode, we're talking about all things neck pain. So if you're out there struggling with neck pain and you're looking for a natural solution, this is the show today for you. I'm super excited to share with you all my secrets. So on today's show, we're gonna start out by first talking about what life is like for somebody who's struggling with neck pain and headaches. What are their, what are their desires? What are they struggling with? What are the symptoms of neck, of neck pain? How is it affecting them in life? Then we're going to get into the most common types of neck pain. So what are the, the three most common diagnoses that most people are struggling with that have neck pain? Then later in the show, we're going to get into the, the, the most common causes of neck pain. Now the causes are different than the types and that's going to help you. You need to first identify the type, then the cause in order to begin to find a natural solution. And then towards the end of the show, we're going to get into um, what the research says. So I'm going to I'm going to highlight the study of the week. Uh, the research indicates what the most successful treatment for somebody just like you struggling with neck pain and what to do about it. And then my favorite part of the show at the end, we're going to get into what uh, quick tips I call it the segment where I'm going to actually teach you strategies that you can do at home to get beginning on the path of natural healing and allowing the neck to heal itself. Again, we were born to heal. Our bodies are designed to heal naturally as long as we give the body the right environment to heal naturally. So this show is going to be jam-packed with valuable information, uh, pain-free living today. So stay tuned. Uh, I'll be back right after this. Welcome back to Pain-Free Living. Again, my name is Dr. Andrew Gorecki, physical therapist and owner of Superior Physical Therapy. And on this episode of Pain-Free Living, we're talking about neck pain and tension headaches, a common problem that people are struggling with. And so let's get started today talking about and describing the common complaints that I hear from thousands of people over the past 10 years that are struggling with neck pain and tension headaches. Like what is life like for them? So the first thing that we want to identify for most people that are struggling with neck pain and headaches is it hurts when they move, right? So when they're turning their head left and right, when they're driving their car, trying to look out for traffic or look in their uh, look in their rear view mirror out the window or backing up, you'll hear that you're here that driving and, and moving the head and neck becomes a challenge. Another common things that people are struggling with is as we have pain with movement. A lot of our day uh, includes movement, such as our work activities and our yard work, our housework. And so what you'll find with people that are struggling with neck pain or headaches is that they are now becoming more dependent on other people, meaning they need to ask help. They can no longer rake the leaves. Uh, they're having a hard time, uh, you know, driving the car. And so they might need their spouse to, to do those activities for them. So you can see that they become more dependent on other people. You'll also see common symptoms of neck pain, such as it hurts in my neck, but also there could be pain that travels down the arm all the way to the fingertips if it's bad enough. There can be numbness and tingling in the fingers or the entire arm. And then if it's really bad, we start to get weakness in the arm itself. And that's all stemming from the neck. So those are the common symptoms. Um, and then if our neck is affecting the muscles in our neck, which are common, common symptoms are tightness, stiffness, lack of turning and mobility, in the head and neck, you'll also start to sometimes get headaches. And those headaches can start from the back of the head and wrap forward. Those are called tension headaches. We'll get to that in the next segment. But again, just trying to describe to you what I hear from people. You know, it's dependent um, dependency. It's, it's lack of mobility. They can't do the things, oh, they can't do the things in life that they enjoy. So you'll hear things like, I love to kayak or garden or take care of my grandkids and my neck pain is making it so I can't do those things. Riding a bike becomes challenging, um, sometimes even simply walking. And then if it's bad enough, you'll hear even things like sitting at a desk. The longer I sit at my desk, the more my neck hurts and the more my headaches get triggered. Again, people are 
are just not doing the things that they love. I call that activity avoidance. So they've made a big list of things that they no longer do and that's really just not the way that we want to live our lives. And so. On today's episode, I want to try to share with you ways to naturally heal. Uh, the reality is the body is designed to heal itself. Even if you've been told you have a certain type of neck pain, there is still the body is designed to heal itself. And, and we don't need medications, injections, and surgery. And the way I like to describe it is that if the body is hurting when we move, and when we don't move, the pain goes away, we know that it's a movement problem. And, and so that means we need to restore the motion in the areas around the neck, and sometimes even in the neck, in order to relieve pain so we can return to moving again. Um, the old saying goes, uh, move, it, move it or lose it, right? And so the problem is, is that when we have pain, we don't want to move it. And I don't disagree with that. And what we're going to talk about later in the show is how it's actually the areas above and below the neck that are the things that need to move more so that the neck doesn't feel so much stress and so much pain and damage. So we'll get to that. But hopefully you're out there and you now know that I understand what you're dealing with. I've also had a neck injury and I've dealt with neck pain and it's not fun. I can remember it was really difficult to sleep. I think I went through a period of time where I bought like seven or eight different pillows and and I couldn't find a, a pillow or a position at night that would allow me to sleep because my neck was hurting so badly. And, and let me just give you a little uh, tip there. The pillow didn't fix my problem. My problem wasn't the pillow, wasn't the bed. It was actually how my body was moving all day long that was causing damage and inflammation. And, and uh, so you have to address the real problem. So on today's show, I'm gonna try my best to help you find solutions to your neck pain and your tension headaches. So stay tuned, we'll be back right after this. Are you suffering with neck pain while you're sitting at your desk? Is your neck pain also keeping you up at night? Is your neck pain related to your headaches? If so, I've got a special event I wanna invite you to. It's called the Free Neck Pain and Headache Workshop that I'm hosting right here in Traverse City, Michigan. Hi, my name is Dr. Andrew Grecki, physical therapist and neck pain and headache specialist. And I'm gonna teach you three simple strategies that you can relieve neck pain and headaches naturally without medications, injections, and surgery. There's only 30 seats available, so call now to reserve your seat. I had really bad migraines before I came to Superior. I was bed bound every day, almost. We've tried almost everything. The process was pretty gradual. I don't get any headaches, really. My life's, it completely did a 180. My case was with headaches, but I'd recommend Superior to really anybody. It will really work wonders. So let's begin by talking about the types of neck pain that are commonly diagnosed for you guys out there struggling. So number one by far, when people have neck pain, the diagnosis is you have arthritis or osteoarthritis or other names would be degenerative disc disease. Sounds pretty scary, but we'll get to that later in the show. Uh, maybe even joint space narrowing. All of those names refer to osteoarthritis in the neck. So osteoarthritis is natural. It's aging of the bone. And what happens in the spine, and you'll see in this image here, this diagram, that as we age, the space between our bony vertebrae in our spine, there's a disc in there, that disc as we age becomes dehydrated. Um, when you're about 25 years old, that disc material is like a crab meat, and when you're 80 years old, it feels like a leather belt. So it gets dehydrated. And the space between the disc where the bones are, the space narrows. That's normal. That's, by the way, why you have lost height. So how many of you guys out there that are over the age of 50 that know that they've shrunk? Most people would raise their hand and say, yes, I'm not as tall as I once was. The reason that you're not as tall, one of the reasons is because that space in each one of those segments in your neck and your entire spine decreases in its width. That's normal and natural. There's nothing you can do about it. Now, if you look farther on the spine here where the nerves come out of the spine uh, in the neck, there's a, a hole. And that hole actually, because of the disc space narrowing, that hole also gets smaller. And so another name for neck-related arthritis is called stenosis. And stenosis is the Latin word for narrowing. It means that hole is getting smaller. And the hole is getting smaller because of the disc space is narrowing as we age. 
because of the dehydration and just the aging process. Now, it's important to recognize that, okay, there's nothing I can do about that. There's nothing you can do about that. You have arthritis. Usually that's identified because of an, an x-ray or an MRI. Say, okay, what can you do about it? Well, it's important to recognize that that hole is actually two half circles created by the bones above and below. And every time you move, every movement you make either opens up that hole or closes it down. And I'll tell you, the nerve doesn't like it when the, when the hole closes down. So the diameter of that hole is decreasing as we age, but it's important to identify the three ways to make the hole smaller with movement. Is extending the head backwards, if it's my left side, it's leaning to the left with my head. And if it's my left side, it is, it is gonna be turning to the right. So those are three ways we can make the hole smaller. Now, the key to finding pain relief when you have arthritis in the neck, which we'll talk about later in the show, is to actually stop making the hole close down with movement and do more movements that make it open up. So simple as that, right? But a lot of people start to say, well, I have arthritis, there's nothing you can do about it. That is not true. There's a lot you can do about it. Number two most common type of neck pain is a disc bulge. Sometimes it might be referred to as a disc herniation or a slipped disc. What we know to be true is that disc material when we're younger, that material, and this is typically a young person, below the age of 35, this is a more common in the younger population, less common later on because again, the disc turns into like a leather belt as we age. So that little disc material has a ring on the outside that is like a little fibrous cartilage uh, ligamentous ring. If that ring gets a tear in it, the inside of that disc can actually push out and push on the nerve. And again, it usually happens because the neck vertebrae has to move more than it's designed to move. And then it tears that outer ring and the disc material pushes through that outer ring and can actually push on the nerve. Symptoms of that would be pain that travels down one arm. Uh, the pain increases with coughing, laughing, sneezing. It's usually worse in the morning and it's gonna be worse when you bend the head down um, or lean away from the side that's bothering you. Arthritis is different. Arthritis hurts when you extend back, when you lean towards that side. So you can kind of differentiate. Also, arthritis is older. 50 years old or greater, disc bulges typically are in the younger population. And finally, the third most common type or diagnosis of neck pain is what's called suboccipital muscle tension or headaches. And again, on this image here, this diagram, you can see that in the back of the head, there are these three muscles on each side of the head. And there's three muscles that create a triangle. And that triangle is called the suboccipital triangle. And it's important to recognize there's a nerve that comes out of that triangle. And that nerve wraps around the back of the head all the way to the face. If those muscles get tension and they're tight, they can squeeze that nerve and that nerve can cause neck pain and headaches. So the headache would be like wrapping from the back of the head around, sometimes even to the face. Sometimes you can have numbness and tingling. But again, that's the type of headache that we're talking about today, that if we can relieve that muscle tension and find the cause of that, we can relieve your headaches. We're not talking about migraines or other reasons why people have headaches. We're talking about headaches that are from the muscles that usually increase with movement or positions like sitting at a desk. And so there you have it. We talked about the three most common diagnoses or types of neck pain. Are you struggling with headaches or neck pain? If so, I've got a special event I want to invite you to called the Free Neck Pain and Headache Workshop that I'm hosting right here in Traverse City, Michigan. Hi, my name is Dr. Andrew Grecki. I am a physical therapist and a neck pain and headache specialist. I'm going to teach you how to relieve headaches and neck pain naturally without medications, injections, and surgery. There's only 30 seats available, so call now to reserve your seat. How do I know if I can help you? We get really good results at Superior Physical Therapy. In fact, 85% of the people that walk in the door leave meeting their goals. And usually that goal has to do with pain relief. So pretty high success rate. And the reason we get such good results is because we're really picky on who we, who we work with. And so let me explain what I mean by that. 
There's a test that we're giving each person we meet to try to figure out if we can help them. We don't want to waste people's time, money, energy if we don't think we can help them. So on the first day, what I'm looking for is I'm looking for motions that can reproduce the pain in the neck. So earlier we talked about with arthritis. If I extend the head back or if I lean to the side, on the left side if that's the one I'm focusing on, if those two motions create the pain and I think it's arthritis, then the opposite motions, leaning away and flexing the head down, should relieve the pain. So I'm looking for motions and activities that cause pain and then ways and motions that relieve the pain. If I can find a pattern, then that's a good sign. That means that if we fix the motions that are causing pain, there's hope. We just need to fix the motion, right? If I have somebody that has constant pain no matter what we do, which is pretty rare by the way, that's less likely to help. And if you're out there right now and you're struggling with neck pain or headaches and any of this information sounds like it's you, we have neck pain specialists that are waiting to, to have you call them and they're here to help you. They're here to help you heal naturally without medications, injections, and surgery. So natural healing is the way that we do it. So if you do need help and you're out there and you want to talk to somebody, just call us 231-421-9300 and we'll get you set up with a neck pain specialist and see, they'll give you the first test, which is okay. Do we think we can help you? We wouldn't want to waste your time. So we'll be honest with you on the first day. Now, moving into the three most common causes of neck pain. And I can tell you that the cause of neck pain, regardless if it's arthritis or a disc bulge or suboccipital muscle tension and headaches, it's not the neck's fault. The neck is influenced by the areas directly below. And so the three most common areas, number one is the upper spine. So the upper back. The entire spine is connected. Everything moves. Every time you turn your head left and right or wiggle your head forward and back, every vertebrae, every segment in your spine moves together. Your whole body moves together. So we know that if somebody loses motion, they get stiff in their upper back, maybe it's because you're sitting at a desk for many hours a day, getting kind of hunched over. If we start to get stiff, and usually the indicators are how your posture looks and if you have like muscle tension and knots in your upper spine, upper back and around your shoulder blades. If you're losing motion in the top of your spine, that upper back, then when you move your head and neck, it causes the segments in your neck to move even more, which can stress out the nerves by closing down the hole if you have arthritis. It can cause a disc bulge by tearing the outer ring in the, in the disc material. And then it can make the muscles in the back of the skull that we talked about earlier tense up and try to guard and those will then compress the nerve. So number one by far is the upper spine. Number two, which is even farther away from the neck, is how your hips are moving. And so we need to have good motion and good strength in your hips. And if they're not moving properly, it will cause even more stress in the neck itself. Many, many examples of this. Um, one example would be the front of the hips. There's a muscle that gets tight because we sit often. That muscle is called the hip flexor. And again, you can see that in this diagram. When you stand up, the muscle needs to have flexibility. And if it's not flexible when you stand up, it'll cause you to kind of uh, stand up with a posture where you're leaning forward. Well, the problem with leaning forward because of a hip muscle that's tight is your eyes don't want to look at the ground. So they will look up. Well, looking up and having your body leaning forward, it closes down the hole in the neck where the nerve comes out. So again, hip muscle can cause neck pain. And number three is even farther away from the neck. And I guarantee you, if you're out there listening and you have neck pain and nobody's looked at this, the third most common reason why someone has neck pain is because they have a foot problem. I know that sounds crazy, but again, in this diagram, you can see that our feet flatten out and they raise up off the ground, okay? They flatten out and they raise up off the ground. And when they do that, it changes the leg length. And so it's really common for people to have one foot that flattens out more than the other. And that will create an unequal leg length. And when that happens, then the pelvis and the hips are off they're, they're tilted one higher than the other and that feeds all the way up into the neck and it can cause one side of the neck to close the hole down. So again, foot and ankle problems can absolutely contribute to neck pain. So there you have it, a really simple explanation of the three most common areas in the body that are causing your neck pain, regardless of the type or the diagnosis. So you're smarter now than you were five minutes ago. And so my hope is that that information can help you find a natural solution and avoid medications, injections, and surgery.
In this segment, we're talking about the study of the week. So we want to talk today about a study that's related to neck pain. And we have a great one. So there is a study that was published a few years ago, and it's a systematic review, which is the highest level of studies. Basically, it looks at hundreds of other studies that were done, and it basically summarizes the results, and it comes to a conclusion based on those results. So pretty powerful stuff. And what it is here, this study was looking at thousands of people, many studies looking at thousands of people. So you've got like 10, 20,000 people that were given an MRI and an X-ray, who, but they also had no pain. So pain-free people that were given an MRI and x-ray, and they gave it all the way from 20 years old to 90 years old. And what they found was pretty fascinating. I'm gonna go ahead and put the chart up right here in the screen so you can see this, but I want you to pay attention to two things. The first one is the first row here, which is called disc degeneration, which is the same thing as arthritis or stenosis. We talked about earlier as the number one most common type of neck pain. And you can see at the age of 60, 89% of people that were imaged have it in their neck, but they have no pain. Pretty fascinating. So that's why earlier I was saying that arthritis is actually not, it's the type of diagnosis, but it's not the cause of pain. And it can't be because if you have all these people that are out there that are having it in their spine, in their neck without pain, you have to come to the conclusion that something else is going on. So a huge amount of people, it's almost hard to find somebody who doesn't have arthritis or disc degeneration in their neck. And then I want you to drop down a few rows and look at the disc bulge. And you can see at 60 years old, 69% of people have a disc bulge on an image, but they had no pain. So again, we can't come to the conclusion that the disc problem is actually what's causing the pain. It's actually the movement problems in the rest of the body that are contributing to stress in the spine. And so you're looking at these images of the spine and it's almost as if you're just seeing that the spine is aging, the neck is aging. And that's normal, it's why you're shrinking, but it's not the cause of pain. So we need to kind of remove that thought process and open up our mind and realize that there's a lot of people that have these problems in their spine itself, but they don't have pain. So hopefully that helps you kind of open up your mindset a little bit and you know, you know the common causes, which are the upper spine, the hips, and the foot and ankle. And then in the next segment here, I'm gonna show you a couple quick tips that you can do to start to relieve your own neck pain naturally so you can avoid medications, injections, and surgery. We don't wanna to have to have surgery. The, surgery uh, the surgeries for the neck are not great outcomes. In fact, 50% of people that end up having a neck surgery two years later have pain again. And the reason is because the most common neck surgery that's done is a neck fusion where they actually just open up the hole and fuse the spine open. What ends up happening is it takes away motion in that segment and then the segment above and below have to move even more and they get damaged and then two years later the pain comes again. And I, my father-in-law actually has three neck fusions. One each is two years apart and he keeps struggling with neck pain. So I want to help you heal naturally. So in the next segment, stay tuned. We're going to show you some quick tips. We'll be back right after this. The, the process was pretty gradual. It took a little bit for me to start to see any signs of progress, but I don't get any headaches really, and my life's, it completely did a 180, so. So, you know, you would meet, we would meet with these, um, you know, we'd walk in the door and everybody was instantly just compassionate. If Ben was in migraine, you know, they would kind of, you know, they would kind of quickly and quietly take him to a dark room and we'd kind of talk quietly and, you know, the, the therapist would work with them back there. And, you know, there may be some release within session. Over, over time, um, he got so much better. And it's like he's got a normal life now. I'm gonna show you how to improve, improve the motion in the drivers below and above the neck. And so this is a really nice strategy. We're gonna start out by using the arms, the hands as a driver, which we know drives motion into the spine, into the neck from the bottom up. 
And we also know that the arms have the ability to move forward and they have the ability to move back. They can rotate across the body left and right. And they can also move from side to side. And so we know that the, the, the arm, the shoulder, that driver needs to move properly in order to drive the right amount of motion from the bottom up into the neck. The problem that's causing neck pain is from the drivers below and above, coming together and transferring energy through the neck. So let's start out with the hand. So we know the hands can move front to back. So we're going to start out by moving the hand front to back. So my first strategy here is I'm going to take my arm and I'm going to move it up and back and down and back. Up and back, down and back. And maybe we'll do this 10 times. Maybe you do it 10 times. I'm only going to do it a few. And I want my hands to follow my eye. So if I go up with my hands, my hands go up. And if I go back and down with my hand, my eyes are going to go back as well. Same thing on this side, down and up, down, and then a little bit up. We don't have to look too far back, but just your eyes are basically following your hands on this first sequence, okay? Then we know the hands can rotate across the body left and right. So we're gonna take the right arm and we're gonna reach back, reach across. And you see how my eyes are following my hands for round one. This is creating just motion in the driver. As the neck is moving, it's moving at the same direction and the same speed as the driver. So there's really relatively no motion or stress occurring in the spine itself in the neck. Same thing on the left arm. Again, my eyes are gonna follow. Just a gentle motion across the body and left, creating lots of rotation. Okay, then we know this driver that creates motion in the neck can move side to side. So we're gonna take that hand and we're gonna go side to side. Again, I recommend 10 of these, each arm, each direction. Again, the eyes kind of, this one, the eyes aren't really following. You're just kind of doing whatever feels comfortable here. Okay, same thing on this side. We're going to take this hand and we're going to reach up and over. Reach up and over, side to side. Now, that way when I'm using my arms now, I'm having good motion happening throughout the entire chain of my arm, including my shoulder blade and upper back. That should improve the motion of the arm driver and create less motion in the neck. Are you struggling with headaches or neck pain? If so, I've got a special event I want to invite you to called the Free Neck Pain and Headache Workshop that I'm hosting right here in Traverse City, Michigan. Hi, my name is Dr. Andrew Grecki. I am a physical therapist and a neck pain and headache specialist. I'm going to teach you how to relieve headaches and neck pain naturally without medications, injections, and surgery. There's only 30 seats available, so call now to reserve your seat. As a special thank you for watching today's episode of Pain-Free Living, I'd like to send you a free consumer's awareness guide for neck pain treatment. It's a guide that I created that helps you make the best decision possible for finding a natural solution to neck pain. In this guide, you're gonna find four common ripoffs as far as it relates to neck pain treatment and also six costly misconceptions about selecting the right neck pain treatment. So all you have to do is give us a call, 231-357-3930, and I will send you free, including shipping, a free copy of the Consumer's Awareness Guide to Neck Pain Relief.